Fantasian is the third full-length album from technical death metal band Cognizance, a Leeds, England formed group with members from, uh, I, I believe, various countries nowadays. Uh, their their style is very much a modern form of technical death metal and one that is uh, maybe less indulgent in trends and more so just kind of stuck in a mode of a form of technical death metal that it was more popular in the late 2000s and throughout the 2010s where uh, they're really, really just focusing on a specific type of uh, dynamic but brutal technical death metal and it's not necessarily brutal death metal it's not necessarily progressive death metal but it pl it plays with a lot of that um a lot of features of both now we could liken their sound to the faceless in general there are a lot of bands that sound like that and they don't they never they never really stood out that much um from that crowd early on i think that their first record incorporated some melodic death metal influences that stood out a little bit. They sounded a bit like earlier Allegheon or Anata in some respect. But uh, as they moved to their second full-length album, they started to stick to a more, uh, I would, what I consider a more standard modern sound for technical death metal. And I wouldn't say that, that has changed dramatically for this release, but that they've iterated upon upheaval in just a direct way with an equally brief but impactful statement. So we'll cut to a song here and, and kind of get into the, some of the details of this record. So if you are into technical death metal, modern technical death metal, and uh, te brutal technical death metal, and even some progressive technical death metal of the modern style, you'll understand where this band is coming from. If you can tell the difference between like earlier Fallujah and uh, Inanimate Existence now, I think you can kind of split the difference with a band like Cognizance because they have some of the uh, floaty kind of spaced out moments that Fallujah introduced later on and uh, some of the uh, more captivating progressive movement that we find in certain aspects and certain albums of Inanimate Existence. Th those aren't direct comparisons. There's a million other bands you could talk about. And I think that's my problem in approaching this record is that this band doesn't necessarily have the thing that they do. I think that their lyrics are pretty interesting. Their production values are fairly standard, but still very sharp and, you know, well up to the modern standard. But I, di I didn't find anything that stood out so much that said, this is the big band right now. This is a big deal. And I never really found that even when they were, they put out those two records for prosthetic, um, this being their first record for Willow Tip, I was expecting something that was uh, pretty well evolved and different. But it turns out it's just a little bit of a longer, more mature album that shows off, uh, you know, in improving skills, a little bit more of a dynamic, dynamic performance in terms of providing di different types of songs. But there are too many songs in this record, and it does kind of become redundant as it cycles through those different things that it can do. So, of course, every uh, performance here is immaculate you know these are very professional musicians and they're quite good at what they do uh if you're a fan of maybe um earlier psychroptic and and other bands that incorporate a little bit of melody into their technical sound i think that there are going to be enough songs on here that stand out in that respect there's going to be a couple that have a couple of like modern uh progressive deathcore moments uh which are they're not very pronounced it's pretty light there aren't a lot of breakdowns on this record or anything like that so it's very palatable it's very approachable and i found myself uh, listening to it because it's you know it's a pretty interesting guitar record but uh at the end of the day after i sat with it long enough i felt like there just wasn't anything that that really stood out about this record other than it being that it's their finest version of what they do yet so there is something to be celebrated there i do think that the uh the artwork and the themes are uh, they've matured pretty well i really like what they're doing with uh, what they have to say and, and how they're going about it and i think that it's uh, it made sense they finally delivered a 40 minute record and we got we got to see how they would pull that off so everything is up to a pretty high standard it's just that i didn't find myself compelled to uh to really stick with it in the long run so there is some lasting value there especially if maybe this is the only record you have by them and, and you'd like to dig into it but i think there were more interesting things about the first record and uh, this just kind of uh piles on a lot of what the, the second record was doing and does it better so 
maybe that'll be your thing. It was just, it was just all right for my taste. So um, definitely worth checking out uh, here in January. Uh, this comes out on Friday along with a million other records. So make sure it doesn't get lost in a shuffle and get, you know, give some of the songs a listen here on the site and uh, read my review to get more of my thoughts. Are the for the devil's work. 